Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and we are here July 26, 2019, vlog number 9. Holy cow, vlog number 9. We're almost at 10. I can't believe I've done 9 already and uh, the following has been great guys. I really appreciate the feedback you guys have given me and it seems like this is uh, going pretty well. So I got a list of stuff we want to talk about today. Um, first, of course, before we do anything, please be sure to like subscribe hit that notification bell and uh, this will keep you guys informed of my videos whenever they're uploaded and uh, keep you in the loop of the vintage VW scene and how we keep our little babies alive and keep them on the road and if you can also for the price of a cup of coffee uh, you can send us a small PayPal donation uh, it could be in any amount it's just a little a little spurt to us just to say hey thank you for doing this and we really appreciate that, guys. Whatever you can afford is fine with us, and uh, we thank you. Um, be on the lookout next week. Um, I will probably have my coffee that I'm joining forces with with my wife in regards to uh, selling espresso beans, Guatemalan, and Colombian. Whole bean coffee, two-pound bags. It's called Mutts and Bugs, and a small... Um, a donation will go to a shelter animal, a shelter to a hospital as well. So um, definitely uh, check that out. I'll have that out next week. Sheltered hospital is that right word? Right word. I don't think so. No, just a shelter. <laughs> um, we've seen uh, we've teamed up with a, a couple of the shelters around the area here. Even the dog that we have came from a shelter. So uh, we're going to be working with them uh, each month uh, and give them a little give them a little percentage. So uh, of our sales, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, so where are we at? July 26. July is out, guys. Holy cow! Summer is just flying by, and uh, we actually have some really beautiful weather here this week in New York. Uh, the week before, we had some crazy heat, and it was heat index of around 105, 110 some days, which is odd here. You know, you do get some, you, you do get some heat, um, but it just seems like also you know when you watch the news and. And whenever there's a heat wave or, you know, whenever there's a cold spurt or whatever it is, it's always record-breaking. Everything's record-breaking these days. I just think it's, it's just headlines, you know. I remember growing up, we had these heat waves. We had cold spurts, so nothing new. Uh, but, yeah, we had some heat uh, definitely last week. And I know it doesn't really last too long here in New York. Maybe, a, you know, you might get one heat wave, uh, one week heat wave, two week heat wave, something like that. But I'm rambling. It's the end of July. Once August comes in, where we get some nice, cool weather in the morning, you get some heat in the afternoon, and then at night it cools down again. And it's just like, it seems like a perfect little balance where you can go out in the morning to go for your run, or in the evening you can go out to eat, sit outside. It's, it's actually very pleasant. I love uh, August weather, September weather here, October weather here in the New York region. And then pretty much after October, once you hit November, that's when everything starts to turn to crap. And uh, it's from November all the way to almost May sometimes. We don't get good weather till June here. So pretty depressing, especially when I want to drive my VWs and get them on the road and drive in nice weather, right? So anyway, that's a little spurt about weather. Why? I don't know. Um, we are almost two months to my New York vintage air-cooled Trepid. So it's the third year I'm doing this three third year I'm doing this show uh, and it, again it's down in Haverstraw that Bowline Plant Road I'll have a link in the description below and uh, this is getting a good following too guys I team up with another guy he's actually my neighbor where I live and he's been doing his classic car show for geez, probably 20 years or so and uh, he does you know muscle cars all different types of classic cars it's in a beautiful location and uh, I teamed up with him last a couple years ago and he said, hey, you know, why don't you just, you know, join us? So I was thinking about putting on a VW show. And he said, why don't you just join us? We got the field. We got the we got the food. We got the insurance. We got everything all taken care of. I'll make your own section there for the VWs. I said, yeah, that's pretty cool. I'd love to do that. Let's try it, you know. Let me get my feet wet with, with running a show. And uh, it's a good spot. It is. It goes to a good cause. It's called His show is called Cruising for Kids, so it goes to a good cause. And it helps out a, a needy kid, a kid who's hurt or 
kid who's got cancer, something like that, and it's uh, it's a good cause. And yes, it's $25 to get into the show, but that's per car. So basically, you can have five people in your car, and it's $25. You know, a lot of shows might say $10 or $15, but if you have your mother in the car, you got your girl, you got your girlfriend in the car, you got your kids in the car, you got your dog in the car, you're going to bang each and every one of them, and, uh, and then all of a sudden you're 50 bucks or so to get into a car show. Uh, so I don't make any money out of this, guys. This all goes towards the causes. Um, I just, I'm just there to put on our VW show. We do some great trophies. I don't do 20, 30 trophies. Um, it's basically first, second, third place, and, and uh, best of uh, judge award uh, goes to you know the most classic crafts. You know we, we look at craftsmanship of our cars, not necessarily everything being period correct. I mean there was cars last year or the year before I selected that were you know custom, you know things that I don't do in my shop, but they were just so tastefully done, and the workmanship was just phenomenal. So that's what I look at. Um, so I'm not gonna pin, I'm not gonna criticize somebody if he's got the wrong outside mirror on his car. If it looks right, it looks the part, and it and it's, it works. That's it, you know, and that's that's what we do. So uh, see if you can come out to that. September 29th is the show. Rain date is the following week. I think it's October 6th. So the New York Vintage Air Cold Traffic and link in the description below uh, to my website, and that'll uh, give you the past videos that we've done. And uh, pretty cool show. Uh, so what else I got my list here? Um, oh, so those podcasts that I mentioned to you last week that I was in, um, the uh, All Things V-Dub and the uh, V-Dub Radio.com by Victoria Whitehouse uh, out of England, I did those two podcasts in one day, which was pretty cool, and they aired uh, this week. And they're both a an hour-long talk uh, with us. And... Uh, all Things V-Dub was with uh, my pop and I, which was pretty cool. Those guys are out of California. Um, and then the uh, V-Dub radio is out in England. So, again, I'll have those links in the description below. They go right to my website. You guys can listen to those and uh, share them if you like. That would be great. So, pretty cool interviews. And then um, I dropped this week the third and final part for the uh, sunroof, the, metal, the crank metal sunroof uh, video headliner installation so I know I was a little late on that last part uh, just because it's been so busy and putting out other types of videos uh, in the interim but I was able to bang that out yesterday for you guys so there's three part series on that let me know if you guys have any questions um, it could be a tedious uh, install but it's really not too bad uh, once you follow the videos and, and lay everything out you know categorize things Lay, lay some, everything on your table, clean things up right, and then, you know, the, 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 the hard part was basically the, you know, getting the top to really line up and open and close and to line up and rise when you hit to the end point of the roof. It's supposed to come up. So there's adjustments that have to be made. We were constantly in and out with the top, you know, the metal square section, just putting it in, measuring, okay, take it out again, readjust the cables, put it back in, you know, test it out again, make sure it cranks, make sure it open and closes again, you got to take it out again, because then you got to put the headliner piece in first, and then you put the top in, you know, so um, it could be a little troublesome, but just follow, just take your time, deep breaths, you know, and I think you'll, you'll make out just fine with that, so let me know what you guys think of that, the sunroof video, part three. Uh, which came out so and if there's any other videos you guys want me to make um, any topics at all I'd love to hear from you guys and, and let me know if I got the time to put them together because I'm a one-man band when it comes to the tech side of the business uh, you know I'm doing a lot of that stuff while my dad and my main man Rams is are working on the cars um, so if, if, you can, if you guys have something of an idea that you want me to talk about or want me to show uh, please let me know um, so a shout out to Rob from Las Vegas, Nevada. He emailed me this week and was talking to some VW people out there. I guess he went to a VW show and they were saying that, you know, what type of gas to put in their Beetle. And I've, I think I've spoken about this in the past, gas and oil. And, and they were saying they like to put 98 octane, the high octane 
in their beetle because it makes the beetle run cooler. I don't know. I, I, I have, I've never really heard that. I'd have to run that by some of my mentors that come by, <laughs> my older fellas that work for Volkswagen um, that are great friends of mine. But for the most part, we're still running 87 in our cars. Why 87? Well, just because, number one, I don't hear any pinging. I don't hear any, I don't have any performance issues or heat, overheating problems when I run 87. So I know if you're in a hot climate, like maybe Las Vegas or, or in the desert or something, that might raise a question. But I still think if you're, the big thing with heat in, in your engine, in, with your motor, and people ask me, well, tell them, oh, my, my engine's overheating, what do you think it is? And I'm like, oh, God, it could be a whole host of things. You, you know, I'd really, the first thing I like to do is actually see your engine compartment and just take a look and see how it's set up. Um, because I can tell sometimes right off the bat why it's overheating and most of the time like nine, like nine times out of ten it's that engine seal not being in there and that'll make your motor overheat or I even see motor they take a picture of their motor compartment their engine compartment and the the rearmost tin is not there I see the ground while I'm looking at the the engine compartment so right there you, you're gonna overheat so, uh, you know, a lot of people think that that's, that stuff is not necessary. The Germans <laughs> did that for a reason, um, to have all that stuff in place. Now, if you have a modified motor, yeah, you can start opening up a whole can of worms there. You know, you start putting aftermarket stuff on that's, you know, just for style or just for looks. Yeah, you could be running into heat problems. Uh, that's why we like to just stay stock, mild upgrade, you know, to, like to a 1641 with a 1600 motor or something. And that's fine and my, my cars run cool so 87 octane I like because it's the freshest gas more, more people buy 87 so the turnaround on 87 is much higher they're always filling that tank for these gas stations so 88 you know, the, the high octane stuff that stuff sits in the ground longer so the older the gas you know you don't want you don't want old stale gas going into your car so I stick with 87 because it's fresh all the time and there's a stop and shop I don't know if you guys have stop and shop across the country for you the, the supermarket stop and shop by me has a lot of traffic going in and out of that gas station so I always go there and always get the 87 because that's what everyone gets and I always put fresh gas in my car that's basically it um, you know if you wanted to add like stable or that Startron that I spoke about years ago uh, in regards to fighting the ethanol, yeah, you can put that in your car, uh, like I say, during the winter months or something if you're not running the car often. But I stick with 87, guys. That's that's basically it. So if you've got a high performance motor and it requires maybe a higher octane, that's different. But a stock motor, I would stay with 87. So I think your heating issues are something else. Uh, and as far as oil, spoken about this before I'll be quick I stick with 1030 weight or straight 30 basic oil nothing fancy um, I mean even you know Sitco oil just straight oil no synthetic blends no nothing like that that's what I use and that's where I've seen success and I've been doing it for got for 20 years um, 1040 is probably okay too but we like 1030 you know, or straight 30 weight so that's that oil and gas um, what am I up to I'm looking at my list here I'm sorry I'm I'm brain fogging right now <laughs> but I'm almost to work so it's pretty cool oh I have some cars for sale right now and two cars that I have for sale are cars that I built so uh, shout out to Joanna in Fargo North Dakota I'm selling her 1956 oval window ragtop beetle classic black on red the red interior and white piping, off white piping. Um, bone stock car, 36 horsepower motor. She's had the car for probably eight years or so, maybe 10. I think it's eight years. I built this car for her right, you know, probably right around the time where I was uh, just starting. And um, great client. She's had the car. She's only put a few hundred miles on the car, took it to a few shows, won some awards. And uh, now she's uh, looking to sell it. I, she's in the middle of. 
you know, moving and uh, getting maybe out of North Dakota. So we have that car up for sale and uh, take a look on my website uh, in the bugs for sale section if you want to see that. And then uh, also a 1962 turquoise uh, Beetle sedan that I uh, restored for Laurie uh, out of the New England area. Uh, she's come down, you know, with a little illness and she needs some help selling the car and uh, I am open arms to helping my past clients out sell their vehicles and um, just had an acorn hit the top of my roof. <laughs> wow. Um, so yeah, the 62 Beetle Turquoise. Guys, check those out. They're going to be, they're on my website in the buy section. Um, really cool cars, clean cars, done right. Um, yeah, if you got any questions, give me a holler, pop me an email, give me a call. We'd love to talk to you about those cars. Um, question of the day. What cars do you guys like? What Beetles, what VWs are your favorite? I like to, everyone's always asking me, what are my favorite years? What are my favorite color combos? You know, what's, I don't know, what do you think of 67, 66, you know, all that, those questions. So I'm reversing the question back to you guys. What do you guys like? What's your favorite year? What's your favorite model, favorite color, combo, all that stuff. And uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that because I'm, I'm the one. <laughs> they're always asking me, oh, what's your favorite year? That was in the podcast last week. Um, she asked me, she's like, what's your favorite year, Beetle? I'm like, oh, God, it's so hard, you know, because I do love, I love 67, and then I love, God, I love the 55 and earlier Beetles, um, you know, those 54s and 53s, ovals, and, of course, I love the Zwitter, which is that hybrid uh, split window Beetle that has the split window in the back, and it's got the oval window dash, you know, so I, I, I like that stuff, but I'm going to reverse it to you guys, and I want to hear what... Uh, what cards you like so and uh, I think that's it I just got to work and I'm gonna have a little cappuccino and I'm gonna sit down and dump this footage that I'm talking to you right now to my computer and start editing it and, and get it out for today so all right guys happy Friday July 26th in the bag next week will be August holy cow and uh, summer's flying right along and I will see you next week be sure to subscribe like hit the notification bell and yeah, all that jazz. Okay, guys, take care. Beep, beep.